Maltino. Oh, we're very old. We've been around since 1975, started as the Maltino project. Um, the impetus for the project was to discover why black pupils were failing at English. Isn't that always the reason for the research? And actually it was found because they were not competent in the mother tongue. So there was a complete shift now. And con today, Maltino continues to champion literacy in the mother tongue, in African languages. We do it through three main things, research and content development, professional development, teacher training, and coaching and support of teachers uh, on site in the classroom, and also very recently learning to support teachers virtually using new technologies. Uh, what are the three core things necessary for project success? In our experience, you need good resources. Obviously, Breakthrough to Literacy was Maltino's flagship program, and sadly, as Hilary pointed out, kind of didn't match the curriculum. Um, more recently, the Vula Bula resources, which I'm thrilled are now anthologies, thanks to Funda Wande in the Eastern Cape. Um, also, our te teacher content knowledge and pedagogic skills have to be worked on. They have to understand the program and understand how to use the resources properly. And again, professional coaching and teacher support is crucial to carry on the program to ensure success. If you don't have these three factors, then it is a recipe for failure. Okay, lessons learned. Okay, these were three like problem areas that I think we always encounter. The first thing is um, we talk about teacher knowledge. Um, we have to build it. And inset training, um, as mentioned exactly in Sarah's words, is not a quick fix. It's sustained, it's got to be lengthy, but funding in the NGO sector is always problematic and restrictive. Second of all, our lot is in a bit of confusion. As we know in our schools, we have a language and education practice policy that says mother tongue till the end of grade six. Our CAPS kind of advocates the end of grade three. So there's no real time for sustainability. And does anybody actually even know what's happening in the intermediate phase? Because I don't. And as said by illustrious professors, a deep knowledge of the L1 actually facilitates transition to the L2. So that's our focus. Finally, mentioned also by um, the speaker before me from Shine, Lubeka, and uh, different interventions, there are disparate systems going on out there. Um, and everyone's working in silos and there is no um, co congruency. Right, this is a bit of a weird slide because I didn't understand half the questions, thanks Nick. Gaps in the NGO sector around reading. I kind of looked at gaps that I found in my professional work. The first one is with government. We're NGOs, but it doesn't mean that we can't, we're not experts and we should be paid as professional consultants and not always have to give a, of our expertise pro, pro bono. Second of all, then I think there needs to be more synergy with universities and NGOs because we have got a lot of good in the field institute research and often academic research is there and would be really useful and practical to combine the two. Well, pants are a bit of an issue because we work with written language and I'm all happy to uh, say varieties and dialects all have val validity when you move to the written language, hugely problematic in the publishing area. And then as far as NGOs are concerned, again, it's money. We have a shrinking economy, um, move to OER, how do you sustain yourself as a business? Um, how do you attract talent in an uncertain economic environment in NGOs? Finally, my message, which I'm going to read because it took 55 seconds. Dear Mr. President, we cannot impose reading in the home. We cannot impose reading for pleasure. But our schools and teachers can lead this campaign. Schools must have libraries. Children must be given time to visit these libraries. And children must be given time to drop everything and read. Whatever happened to that? Foundation phase teachers need more in set training, resources, and support to become confident and knowledgeable reading experts. The development of quality resources, the teaching of reading in the mother tongue must be prioritized. And universities, or preferably, can we have new teacher training colleges, must offer dedicated, specialized foundation phase courses in how to teach reading and writing in the mother tongue, and then use bilingualism, use your knowledge of your L1 to transition to your L2. With hope and thanks. Thank you.